Hi, I'm Quinn Wilkes, sales manager here at Travis Industries, and I'm pleased to introduce two brand new pellet stoves into the market, the new Lopi Foxfire and the new Lopi Deerfield. Both of these stoves were designed simultaneously, and they give you the best of both worlds, a great looking steel stove, or if cast iron is more to your liking or more to your design, we've got you covered here with the new Deerfield. Now, first a little bit about Travis Industries. We're located in Muckleteal, north of Seattle, and we are uh, about 30 miles north, and uh, we are in a building called the House of Fire, and we manufacture multiple brands of fireplaces and stoves there. Uh, you'll find us with the uh, fireplace, Extraordinary Fireplace X is there. Uh, there's also Da Vinci fireplaces, and then uh, Tempest Outdoor Torches, and then the Lopi stove line. Now, Lopi is one of the most trusted names in home heating appliances. We've been building uh, heating appliances, stoves, and inserts for close to 40 years now. And so this is a combination of over 20 years of building pellet stoves, and we've got an award-winning design crew down there in our R&D department that have given you two incredible new stoves. Now, I'm going to start over here with the Foxfire and tell you more about the stove itself. First, right up top, it's a step-top design. And what's nice about that step-top design is it lends itself to a taller hopper. So in this particular model, we can put 80 pounds of fuel in it. Uh, we use this step-top design, and it comes from our, our uh, you know, best-in-class selling wood stove, the Endeavor. And that stove has been a timeless design for us for over 20 years. And so that step-top design just lends itself very well to a pellet stove. Now, on the top of the hopper is the glass hopper lid. And this glass hopper lid is clever because you can also look, just look through the glass hopper lid and see how much fuel is in the hopper. Uh, on the very top of the lid is a amazing new device called the Capsin Control Board, and that Capsin Control Board is a digital control board. You simply wave your hand across it, it comes to life, uh, it tells you what process you're in. Now right now the stoves are already lit and operational, but it'll tell you exactly where the heat settings are at, you've got 10 different levels of heat out input, or out and uh, uh, 10 different levels of fan operation for output. You also have the ability to sync the fan directly to the heat input and it will adjust automatically. Uh, also, there's a thermostat mode and uh, Scott uh, Abley is our technical director here at Travis. He's gonna go over some of the technical features, how to clean the stove after I get done here, but I'll introduce him in a, in a bit. But this is an amazing device because the thermostat will regulate your fuel and you can actually shut the stove completely down when the thermostat's not calling for heat and it may go hours without needing heat and then turn itself back on or you can have it step down to where it's just managing a small amount of fuel until it needs heat. Uh, so there's two, uh, multiple ways you can run it on the thermostat mode. Uh, it's a very clever device and it's uh, a built-in thermostat so it's built on board so you don't have to wire it to a wall thermostat, it's actually designed into the appliance itself. Now as we come to the top of the stove, here's where the air is blowing out on either model and both models have a thinned cast iron heat exchanger. And what's nice about that is it's capturing that heat, it's moving that heat out into the room, it's incredibly easy to maintain so you're not spending a lot of time maintaining the stove and it's designed, it's 25 pounds of heavy cast iron that's designed to last a very, very long time. Uh, below the uh, heat exchanger itself is the firebox. Now the firebox is lined with removable stainless steel panels and you can see them inside of there. The stainless steel panels help hold the heat in for longer burn time. Uh, it, it holds more heat in, it gives it a better combustion on the fuel. So those panels hold that heat and hold more of the heat into the stove, then we can get that heat out of the stove. So that's the stainless steel panels. And then at the bottom where the, where the fire actually burns, that's your burn platform. We're gonna show you an animation of how the burn platform works, but the fuel gets pushed in from the back side and then as new fuel comes in, it pushes the ash out and basically it's a self-cleaning system. And so that, you know, it won't get everything out of there, but it's gonna move a lot of that fly ash down and drop down to the bottom of the stove where the ash pan is located. So it's an it's a ingenious design. It's designed for maintenance free and whether you go with a Deerfield or the Foxfire, both 
stoves are designed identically inside. The blowers, the feed systems, how they move that air out uh, is all the same. Now on the back of the stove also, you have the flu outlet and the air intake. And this is important because your combustion air can be pulled from outside of your home. And that is one of the things we really recommend is outside combustion air because the pellet stove is going to take the exhaust and push it out through a small three inch exhaust. But it is a fan driven system. To get this fuel to burn completely, that fan has to be operational. And if that fan uh, is pulling air from the house, now it's just pulling air through the combustion system and sending it back outside, that air has to be replaced. It gets pulled back in to your home. By using outside combustion air hooked directly to the appliance, now it's a closed loop system in the combustion plant, and now you're pulling air from outside, going through the uh, firebox and out the flu system. It's a sealed system, uh, very efficient that way. Uh, definitely something you want to look at, especially if you're in a smaller home, is outside combustion air. Now I want to talk a little bit about operation of a pellet stove. When a pellet stove is operating, you've got a combustion fan that's moving air through uh, to burn the fuel more completely. Uh, pellets are hard compressed sawdust and it needs a lot of air to burn 100%. Now with that, um, you also have blowers that are blowing air through a heat exchanger and that's moving air into your home. And the stronger the blowers, the more heat it's going to move through the house. So when you're in operation and the blowers are on low, you're not moving as much air and the blowers are quieter. When you're up on high, obviously the blowers are going to make more noise because they're moving more air. Now when you initially start the stove, the first thing the combustion fan does is it runs at a very slow speed and it's just generating air and moving air and creating a draft inside of the appliance. And then as the igniter starts to heat up, the combustion fan is staged to speed up and increase the speed so now it's pushing more air past the igniter to get that combustion going as quickly as possible. That whole process is about a three minute process from starting on low to working its way up to high on the combustion fan. That combustion fan is going to run on high whenever there's uh, a need for it. In other words, whenever there's more fuel coming in there, larger amounts of fuel and the igniter is on, we want to get this stove burning as quickly as possible so you're going to get that heat back in the house. At the same time, once the appliance is shutting down, we will stage that combustion fan so that it slows down as you have less fuel inside of the stove to eventually the point to where it shuts off. But it's a staged system and it's all part of the normal operating sounds of a pellet stove. Some of the other things that you should know about a pellet stove as far as sounds is the sounds when the fuel works its way down from the hopper to the burn platform. There is a mechanism we call an HRD, a horizontal rotary di uh, disc drive system, and it separates the fuel from the hopper and the auger. As it rotates, the pellets fall into it, and then it closes off and drops the fuel down onto the auger, and then that auger moves it into the burn platform. This is all designed in so that there's no point ever in the operation of the stove that you could ever have fire burning back up the auger, let's say you lose power, there's a big fire inside of there and a lot of high winds against it or something like that. There's no way that fire can move back up and get up into the hopper because of that horizontal rotary disc. Another feature of the stoves that I want to show you is that on either side, right hand side, you're going to have an air control. And what this is for is a, you move this back and forth and it's closing a shutter inside of the stove. It's closing off the amount of air that gets in there by pushing it in and opened up, by pulling it out, it's closing. And there's directions for this in the manual. And what that, uh, how that's important is that a technician is going to set this up at the point of installation. Um, if you have a tall chimney, maybe a 30 foot chimney, we want that more closed so you're not moving uh, more air through there. The stronger the chimney draft, the more air that gets through there and it can burn the fuel up when you're running the stove on low. If you, you have that problem and it shuts your stove off, you want to close that air down so you have less air moving through there. At the same token, if you vent it straight out through the wall, you may need more air to burn that fuel more completely. And as far as burning fuel completely goes, there are vast differences on pellets across the uh, whole North America here. 
um, the pellets that are on the west coast burn completely different than pellets on the east coast in most cases. Uh, it's a hardwood pellet back there. It's usually generally more ash. And it may need more air to burn more completely at, because of the fuel that you're burning in your area. One of the things we provide with every Lopi stove is a hardware pack. And in that pack, you're going to have various components that are going to help you maintain this stove for years and years to come. So in the hardware pack, it looks something like this. It'll be a bag, and it's going to have various tools. In there will be the operation manual. We highly recommend the operation manual. You read it thoroughly, understand you purchased a, a, you know, a very, very nice home heating appliance. We want you to understand how it works and why it works the way it does, the installation manual. Also, you'll find some flyers in here on paint if you want to choose to possibly change the color. Uh, the Foxfire is painted the metallic black, and we do the, the Deerfield with the uh, detailed cast iron. Uh, we do that to make it pop a little bit with a, a new iron, a gray color. Uh, and that is a Stove Bright product. Uh, we supply a sample can with every appliance in case it needs to be touched up. But that sample can is made by Stove Bright, and you talk with your local retailer to uh, get additional paint if you want to change the color or enhance the color at a later time. Uh, also, we include a flyer for a device called an ash vac. An ash vac is a vacuum cleaner that's designed to clean pellet stove ash. Pellet stove ash is a very fine, fine ash, and a lot of vacuums aren't suitable for handling pellet stove ash. Plus, if you pull up a hot ember, you certainly don't want to do that in your household vac. This uh, particular vacuum cleaner is designed to pull up hot embers and designed to capture those fine particulates so you're not moving that around the house. Uh, Loveless Ash Vac is uh, one of the brands that we recommend. Talk to your local retailer for that. Now, the brushes, there's two different brushes. There's a bottle brush and there's a broom brush. These are designed to reach inside of the stove when it's not in operation and you want to clean the baffles down. That fly ash will uh, move itself around the firebox and you'll get it up on the baffle plates and up in the heat exchanger. So you brush that down, remove the baffle plates, brush the inside of the firebox wall, the heat exchanger itself, some of the little corners, it's easier to get the, uh, the uh, brush, uh, the, the bottle brush into that and that'll allow that ash to drop all the way down onto that ash pan. All the ash will collect in the bottom of the stove of the ash pan. Now, this device, and all three of these, by the way, all three of these devices hang on the back of the stove. There's tabs there for it so you don't lose them. Now, uh, this is a tool we've designed that will reach in over the top of the deflector. The deflector is the stainless steel portion that's right inside of the burn platform. And that deflector has our logo on it. And what it's doing, it's holding that heat down into the burn platform so you're getting a better combustion. But it also uh, keeps that fire from getting up on the glass. This tool will allow you to reach over the top of that and get a clinker out. Now, a clinker is looks like a little chunk of dirt or rock, uh, lava, if you will. It's unburned materials, and it comes from sand and grit and the, and the sawdust waste And when they make the pellet back at the pellet mill. But that'll build up in there, and it can inhibit the operation of the stove. Periodically, if you need to move it out of the way, that's what this does is it allows you to rake that out. And then the burn platform has small holes in it those holes can be cleaned with the tip on the end of the, of the, the clean-out tool. Uh, the burn platform is held in place with a small key. That key uh, hopes it, uh, holds it all uh, together inside of there where the burn platform is at. And here's an additional key just in case you lose the one you get with a stove. And then uh, there's two fuses on the back of the stove. There are spots for two fuses in case we have an electrical incident, a power surge, or something like that we blow a fuse, we do supply you with additional fuses for your low-pi pellet stove. All right, I want to say thank you very much for spending some time with me. Um, again, I'm Quinn Wilkes here at uh, Travis Industries, I'm one of the sales managers, and I really appreciate you purchasing one of these low-pi stoves. Um, if you want to learn more about uh, low-pi products, go to www.lowpistoves.com and you'll find about a whole family of different home heating appliances, stoves, and inserts. In addition to that, uh, if you're ever in the Seattle area, come north about 30 miles to Muckleteal and come up to our factory. We have some regularly scheduled tours, and we're going to get you through here and meet some of the fantastic people that build these heating appliances. 
Now I'm going to hand it over to Scott Abley, who heads up our technical department, and he's going to go through some of the technical aspects of operating the control board and maintaining your pellet stove.